Okay, so uh, again, next class we'll learn about templates and how to save a template and use them. We'll, we'll introduce a little bit of stuff like that today, but um, probably not go into it. So again, you'll notice there is a whole bunch of uh, options here for uh, using templates right there. So again, we'll make our own template next class. For today, I'm just going to start with a blank document again. And let's quickly go over some of the things that we should know about our MLA format. We're going to review a little bit, some of you who were not here, but here we go. We'll go real quick. Of course, the first one is to make sure the margins are correct. Where's the margins at? Insert, design, layout, margins. Okay, and you'll see that's where you can add margins, do custom margins. The MLA format's 11111, right? One inch all the way around. Okay, so make sure you have that one. Uh, again, you can see these rulers that go across top. If you do not see these rulers, you can go under view and you'll see there is a ruler option. Again, you can say view ruler. If you do not see the rulers going across the top, it's under view rulers, view rulers. Okay, in addition, if you remember last class, we talked about making our last name and page number in the upper right corner for the MLA format. Do you remember that? Remember, don't put it on the first page too. Remember that? But today, uh, we're not really going over the MLA, so let's just go over the margins and footer options. Again, margin would be anything that goes across the top of our page, and footer would be across the bottom. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see our page. Again, most pages are 11 by 17. If you wanted a different size paper or size, there is an option here for size. Again, it's here under layout. Uh, most common ones would be the... Uh, and again, what is driving this is the printer drivers installed. So again, I learned that the hard way in that I was trying to do a tabloid size. Tabloid is 11 by 17, and my printer didn't, it, it wasn't giving it to me. And then I had to read, I went to the Microsoft website and looking for it, and I read that, you know, it, what is pulling this is the printer drivers from the printer. So. There should be um, different sizes. You'll notice the tabloid is not in there. And why is tabloid not in there? Well, that, that laser printer over there won't do. It, it won't do 11 by 17. So, you know, it's like, it's very frustrating because you might want to make something that's 11 by 17. So how did I get around that? Um, I went to a computer. Here's how I got around it. I went to a computer that actually had the appropriate drivers for a larger size paper. And I saved that file and I went back to my computer that didn't have them and it worked. I was able to use it, but I wasn't able to make it, is what I was trying to say. It was just like, <coughs> you know, this one says 8.5 by 13. That's bigger than 8.5 by 11. Oh, well, here's 8.5 by 14. But all these envelopes, hmm. I don't know, but there is a way. There's no way to type it in either. That's what I was looking for. I was like, well, can I just type in the size of paper I want? There's no custom. I haven't. If you can find that, help me out, please. I just I haven't been able to. Like the online ones where you blank out. Yeah? Maybe that gives you more options? Well, it's, it's a little bit different. Like, if you do, like, custom page size, you can hmm. So maybe the online version. And then you have a course orientation here where you go landscape is kind of this way, right? And portrait is this way. Landscape and portrait. Your size. Columns is something that you can actually split your, split, split your page up into columns. When you choose a different column, and then columns are very popular, especially for news layouts and things like that. Like we have a newsletters here. A lot of companies have newsletters that they give out to their employees and things like that. Two is very common. One of the things you notice when you choose the two columns, notice how it puts the little uh, uh, tabs at the top and the ruler at the top right there. That is how it can differentiate the different options. So when you're typing, let's let's. I'm going to kind of just put in some text randomly here. Typing, 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 typing. Notice how it stops halfway through. The space between the two columns is called the gutter. Gutter. So if I hit return a couple times, I'm going to go all the way down here. Hold on. So I just put some text in there, text in there for randomly. Notice it goes all the way to the top. Okay. So the term that used is called wrapping. Wrapping the wraps around to the next line 
So you go around and it goes over here. Everybody got that? Okay, that was under columns right here. Again, you have breaks here where you can have a page break. You also have columns where it's wrapping columns. By default, it's going to go from column to column. You can adjust that as well. Insert a section break and start a new section on the next page. It's kind of like making a new page break. Continuous insert a section break and start the new section on the same page. Even odd odd pages. That's for if you're printing things like a book kind of option, right? Because you need to have things that go together like that. So that's what's under these page breaks here. If you hit a break, it'll go to a new page at the end. See that? I hit the break option. And it, again, it, the columns continue. So that was underneath breaks. It's kind of like insert new blank page, right? Remember we did the insert blank page for your work cited? Uh, line numbers, uh, just, just how it's going to number your pages, I believe. I don't know. I have to see this option. Yeah. Uh, Normal multiple pages. There you go. And there's your page setup. See again, printer drivers are driving everything here. Look at that. Evil. Evil. <coughs> um, hyphenation is where it's going to hyphenate your letters. So let me get some real text so I can explain that to you and how to do it. Right now, I have some garbage text and it's not very good. So let me find some decent text. I'm going to start with another blank document here, and I'm going to find some decent text. Let me put some columns in there like we had before. Some columns in there. Let me go to two columns here. There we go. Let me find some text. Uh, let's go to, of course, Wikipedia. We can steal from there. And, of course, maybe in your art class you have to write about a famous artist. What's your favorite artist? Uh, Picasso. Picasso? I, I told you, you know, what's Picasso's famous saying? I told you that already in class. Good artists borrow, but great artists steal. <laughs> How do you spell Picasso, though? P -A -P -I -C P -I -C. P -I -C what? Picasso like that? There we go. Okay, let's steal some text from Picasso. Okay. And of course, if you go to Barcelona, you can go to the Picasso Museum there. It's just there. It's very nice. Oh, you just bring your last class? No. We're learning new stuff. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I, I just got the two columns, right? Mm hmm. Uh, before talking, I remember you showed us one time about how do we go through and remove all the hyperlinks. We're going to do that. We're going to review that. So again, there's two types of pasting. If you want to use keyboard commands, if you hit Command V, it pastes with all the with all the links, right? We don't want that because then my 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 art teacher is going to know I stole from the Wikipedia. So what do we want to do? You want to hold the Shift key down, Command Shift V for Victor. Oh, that didn't work. No, thought that would work. Uh, how about this? Paste. Right here under under home, keep formatting format only, text only is this one. Why why is it isn't it unformatted text? I swear it was a shift in there, unformatted text, and notice the links don't go by. Links don't go by. Did you see that? It's under home this one. Okay, so in my columns I might want to have the text um, be what's called hyphenation. If you don't know what hyphenation is, that, I was, so to come back to what I'm trying to show you is the stuff under layout. We're still under here. I'm still under this tab. I'm trying to show you the stuff under this tab. First one was margin. We already looked at that. Orientation, page size, columns. We make two columns. Breaks, we talked about that. You can make a new page break or a line break there. Go to a new one. Line numbers, uh, I don't know what that does very much. Hyphenation is where I'm at now. So what is hyphenation? Well, in this case, when we're looking at the words here, you'll see they're all solid, and it's kind of jagged, ragged, right? Remember, this is left aligned, ragged, right, right? That's what that's called. Well, you can also do what's called hyphenation. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
Hyphenation is where you take long words and you split them up into smaller words with a little dash in it, right? You know what I mean by hyphenation? hyphenation? So this hyphenation option is here. You got a none is the default one. Then you have an automatic where it will determine, or you can go to manual. What is the difference between automatic and manual? Well, the, the manual one is you can tell it how many syllables, because usually how the, the, the hyphenation works is by syllables in your word, right? The syllables? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know me, I had Sister Rita for my English teacher. <laughs> so automatic, you'll see, there we go. It took the word playwright and it hyphenated, or flu, in, influence, right? Influential artist, see that? In sculpture, right? Why do we do that? Well, it does it for uh, spacing reasons. You can get more space out of it sometimes. So if you're trying to jam things together, you can use hyphenation. You can squeeze more words in or less words in. Then you get the problem of this, though. Ba. Famous. And that's not very good. So I might adjust my hyphenation so that it uses three letters or more before it starts the hyphenation. This kind of this is kind of hard to read. This is, it makes it difficult. That's why you would use the manual. Well, you would use the manual. So again, I would come over here to the hyphenation and go to where it says manual. Let me see if hyphenation is complete. I can't adjust it. What? Oh, hyphenation option. Sorry. Limit consecutive hyphens to three. I was under the, the option at the very last option under hyphenation. And it says limit consecutive hyphenation to three. And then it should, no, oh, that didn't work. Maybe I have to select it all. Where was that? Hyphenation option. Automatic. Oh, we can turn that off. Hyphenate words in caps. Limit consecutive hyphens to three. Let's see if that works. We, we want to get rid of this right here, the ma tease. Ma tease. There we go. I had to turn that off, but that, then now I don't have any hyphenation. Okay, so I don't know. Let me see. Limit consecutive. Oh, that's the number of words? Playwright, yes. Influential. Oh, it's like a manual way of doing it. Do you see that? Okay, I don't know. I thought you could limit. No, th this is three. No, oh, but I still got the family. I don't want this famous thing here, this famous. I can't limit the hyphenation. I thought you could limit it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Then. I don't know. I thought you could limit it. But that's what hyphenation is. Uh, where were we at? So we got left indent, right indent. This is before and after. These are spacings before the paragraph break. Okay? That's what these are. So right here, let's just look at that for a moment. So let me delete this. Here's a paragraph break right here. Right? Paragraph break right there. So I want to be able to add more space. I hope it's doing it at the top as well. Why is it doing it at the top? Hold on, let me see. Paragraph break. Oh, that is, a, that is paragraph break. So there you go. This is the space between the paragraphs. See that? So this is paragraph break, and this would be before and after. Okay, let's practice our word wrap. Word wrap. So it, remember, if you put a picture in, let's get a picture. We're going to steal a picture from Picasso. Here he is. Mr. Never Made Anything Original. Stole everything. <laughs> copy image. Right? Right-click on it. Copy image. We're going to go back to our word. Uh, find a spot, paste image, edit, paste, puts it in there, let's make it smaller, if you want the text to wrap around the picture, that's what the wrap option is right here, do you see it up here, you got position, do you want it at the top of your text, 
in the middle, or on the left, so on. You can uh, choose the position. Right now, by default, it's kind of right here. Oh, kind of there. Let me undo that uh, position. That would be top. I guess it's kind of here then, I guess. So there's a way to position your, your text or your picture. But then this is wrapping. How will the text wrap around? If you use square, square, it'll wrap around normal square. So again, make sure you know how this is an actual paragraph break there. That's why. There we go. Um, so how do you get the picture format? Oh, when you have it selected. So to get the picture format, you have it selected. And then this option comes up up here, picture format. And you can change the color and stuff. We're not going to do that today. We can do that if, well, we can do that today if you want. This is not a color picture, but there is ways. Let me finish with the uh, layout options. I'm sorry. So we got position. We got wrap. Okay. Then, uh, again, I'm under layout here, under layout. The reason why I have the picture format here is because I have this picture selected. We'll get to adjusting pictures in a minute. Let's get to uh, what these things are over here under layout again. You got bring forward, send backwards, selection panel, alignment, group, and rotate. Whoosh. They all do different things. The first thing I want you to, I don't have anything to bring forward or send backwards. What does that mean? Well, if you want to have things underneath or over top of each other, I would say the best thing to think about is how you might have text that is not in the list. Right, right now, this text kind of goes in a big thing and it wraps around the picture. But what if you have, let's say, the, uh, remember you can do text box right here. See the text box right here? Under insert text box right here. And if I go to text box, I can draw a box of text. Draw text box. And I can draw a text box. And we can type in Picasso. And of course, my box is, I guess, not big enough because the paragraph break option, whatever. So I could have a text box like that over top, but now I actually have layers. If you look at it, I actually have three layers. What do I have three layers of? Well, I have a layer of text here, I have a picture, and then I have a text here. So there's actually three different things going on. So if you come over here to the layout option, you see you got to bring forward, send to back. If I go send to back, it's behind the picture, right? If I say bring forward, it's in front of the picture. If I select the picture and say send to back, it doesn't do anything because there's nothing underneath it. But if I bring forward, it goes over top of it. So these send forward, bring backwards is when you have things over top. How did I make this text? It was under text box, under insert, right? So you can have text floating around. The problem is it doesn't format it or move it. And I'll show you what I mean. You would have to group it together. So let's say you're you're typing along, and you're typing along, and you're typing along, typing along. Oh, it's moving it. It moved it. I thought it would stay still. It looks like it's been attached to this picture. Let me see. Oh, that's not moving the picture. Oh, it seems to be moving it. That worked. Okay, you get the idea how to do forward, backward? Forward, backward? Yeah, I like selected it, and I'm trying to send it to my back, and it's still like square. <laughs> what kind of object do you have? Text box. You have a text box. What, are, what other object do you have? Photos. And it won't go behind it? <laughs> no. Well, mine's not going behind it either. It did at one point. There it goes. I had to click off and on. Maybe I need to click off and on. Try that. Did that work? Yeah. OK, let's find out. Uh, the one I really wanted to show you today was uh, some of the find and replace. Remember that one? OK, so 
Let's talk about misspelled words, which we always misspell things, don't we? At least me. Let me delete some of this. And let me put my name in there. Okay, so randomly, my last name comes up misspelled, right? Because Microsoft Word does not know what it is. So you're done typing your paper, you're ready to turn it into your English teacher or your art history teacher, and you want to make sure everything's spelled right. Okay, so what are some of the things we can do? Well, we can go underneath the find and replace option. Oops, if I can find where it's at. Oh, it's not open? Well, you know, she only has three member meetings. It's that, it, it's that, uh, um, it's the library class. It's only like, you know, ha it's only like a few weeks. Yeah, well, I don't know. We're, we stole her room, so. But this is my room. Okay, let's talk about the find and replace. Here we go. So under reference is where a find and replace should be somewhere in here, isn't it? No. No oh, finer. I hear spell it's under review, I'm sorry. <laughs> under review. So we have three things that might really help you in your writing. Those three at the very top left corner there. You got your spelling and grammar. Thesaurus. Which of course keep using the same word over and over again, it sounds like a redundant, so go and use your thesaurus and come up with good synonyms, right? Synonyms, is that what they're called? Synonyms. Synonyms? Synonyms. Okay, and then word count, of course, sometimes your, 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 your professor or English teacher or something will say, you need to have, what, like 500 words in your paper, right? Or something like that, so you can get your word count as well. Okay, so let's look at some of these. Remember the uh, option for Okay, listen. The one that's on the test is ignore all. What do you think ignore all does? I think that one's on the all test. The all the RAS cuffs in the paper. If you ignore once, it ignores the one that's highlighted. How do you know which one is highlighted? It's showing you here and it's showing you here. If you hit add, it adds it to your dictionary and won't come up as a misspelled word. So if it's a word you use all the time, like your name, right? You add to the dictionary and it won't, it won't keep coming up with the misspelling, right? So if you are on mobile, then you will only be able to see the time to open the history dictionary. Is there any way that you can just remove that one from your dictionary and then it won't come? On a phone? Yeah. What do you mean? You mean like spell checking on your phone? Like not the spell checking, like you can remove some of the words, like, like my last time when I created it, my last time it was like dictionary and I I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just thought I maybe. Maybe under options. Options. Okay, but you you guys know what why I would use add for this, right? If I use add here, it'll add it to the dictionary. Oh, it keeps coming up. Oh no, it went past that. It said sculpture now. Ignore once. Ignore. Ignore. Change, change all. There you go.
But then you'll notice my name doesn't come up with the red line anymore because I used add. Don't forget about that. It'll save you time. Okay, let's talk about thesaurus. Thesaurus. Again, if you go to thesaurus, it's going to go through. That doesn't really help you a lot. The best thing to do if you're going to use a thesaurus is to select the word you want first. So um, let's say you wanted to change the word invention. You use the word invention too much, right? If you go to thesaurus, it'll then start giving you the word. To give you, you know, similar words. Okay, <laughs> I find the best way to do this is sorry, to select the word you want first, then go here. And of course, you can then change it to whatever you want. How do you change it? Is by selecting the word. So, if you want, uh, what invention could be discovery. Just double click on it, and it should change it. No. How do I change it? Discovery. How do I change it? Insert discovery. There we go. I had to right click. Does everybody have that? Okay, let's talk about word count. Again, it'll show you how many words. I only have one word because I have something selected. Dis deselect or hit command A to select all then go to word count it will tell you how many words you have I have 120, 192 words 31 lines, 2 paragraphs and so on ok got word count ok now here comes the most famous one of all find and replace a lot of times when you're writing you have a word that you want to replace Never use that that ink word. Whatever, whatever word. So let's say I had Raskoff throughout, and I wanted to, you know, make sure that you know it's somebody else's name in there. You can use what's called find and replace, and what it'll do is it'll find that word throughout all your papers and replace it with a new word. Find and replace. I find that very useful. How does find and replace work? Well, the easiest way to do it is to select your word you want to replace. I'm going to start with my name right here. So I'm going to select it. Once you have it selected, you go underneath uh, edit. Uh, is it find and replace? I know it's under here somewhere. Hold on, I'm, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. There we go. Woohoo! Okay, let me review. Okay, find and replace. I haven't been able to hear. Here we go. So, we don't like cubist. It's a bit of the dumbest art ever made. Cubism. Whoosh. No. So, in the. We want to replace cubits with what? Something else. Rococo. So we could type up here cube. Just find it and then replace. And it pops up over here. And we could put in Rococo. Rococo? Ro. R O. O. Rococo? R O C O C C O? I don't know. I think so. There you go. There we go. Okay, but I got find and replace. Yeah. Images inside of Word. Um, I'm not going to go with this one. Let's go steal some paintings. Let's go steal some pictures.
How about we get our Toulouse Lautrec? You guys like Toulouse Lautrec? Who likes Toulouse Lautrec? Who likes Toulouse Lautrec? Anybody? Oh, he's a painter. You gotta watch the movie. You gotta watch his Bala Rouge or whatever it is. Not the one with Nicole Kidman dancing, but the one from the fifties. Is it in Spanish? Because I can. No, it's in it's in English, but. Uh, I, I recommend the one from the 50s with Jose Ferrari. Ferrari. He played him. He did the whole movie on his knees. Yes. Okay, so let's say we want to put this picture in and we want to uh, change the colors or change whatever. Um, so you can copy and paste this. Right click, copy. Go back to Word. And you can paste it. I'm going to start with a new document. And let me zoom out a little bit here. And paste is Command V. Okay, so when you have an image here, you might want to adjust the image itself. You can adjust the image in several ways. If you have an image selected, any image, I just use this color image. The reason why I'm using color image so I can show you how to adjust the colors. So you have some basic photo color correcting things, like in your on your phone, right? You can adjust your pictures you take on your phone, right? You have basic ones like that. If you go under picture format here, you'll see you have some options. You got remove background. I don't know what that does, but we can click on that. But that doesn't work very well, so I'm not going to do that. Um, let's. Uh, how do I undo? Discard changes. Uh, change picture. <coughs> and that changes your picture. Correction. This is like in your phone, right? You got some basic. Brightness contrast, right? Right, basic brightness contrast. So if you want it brighter, and so on. Right, brightness contrast. You got a color correcting, just like in your phone, right? You take pictures on your phone, you can do a little sepia tone here like that, or some kind of special effects. Right, it's under color. Um, you can also add your own color if you want, and you can have transparency. You can adjust all kinds of options here. Saturation is the amount of color. Temperature is the actual temperature. The temperature, it looks like here, is measured in Kelvin. Right, you all know Kelvin? Okay, so that was underneath the picture options. Okay. That was under color. I was down here, set picture color is where you can adjust by hand. In addition, you have the artistic effects. If you want to give yourself, you know, these crazy effects, you got your, your Surratt look there. If you don't want Surratt look. Uh, you want to have... Uh, um, Maybe this look there, you got your, your, your bubbly look there, whatever you want to call that. Again, it was under artistic effects right there. Artistic effects. Next one here is transparency. You can give it transparency. Remember how we had things behind and in front of each other? You can kind of do a collage if you want where you have things over top of each other and blended together. That's what transparency is there. So let's say you wanted to have some text in there. Oops, text, spell it right. You, know, you can have that behind the picture. Well, that's not going to work, but you know what I mean by transparency, right? Okay, that's like the trans... The, you, this is a great one. I use it all the time to save on memory. Let's say you made a document and you, you want to recompress the picture so that it's not taking so much space. One of the problems you have in Word is that whatever you copy and paste into Word, it takes that file size. Because I use a lot of Photoshop files, right? And I'm going to put the Photoshop files into my Word document, but a lot of my Photoshop files are like 20, 30, 40 megabytes. And I keep putting those images into Word, the file keeps being 20, 30, 40 megabytes, right? So what I do is I recompress the photo, and it makes it smaller. Which one is that? It's that one right there. And the beauty also of the recompress is it'll recompress all the photos to that size. So it's this one right here. Very useful. If you click on this one, it'll say, how do you want to recompress it? Usually you can recompress it into, and I give you examples. This is like a wizard here. Are you going to email it? Are you going to print it? 
Are you going to put it on the screen? See how they got that right there? But once you choose one, I might use the 150. This is going to, you know, 150. But notice right here, it says all pictures in this file. It'll go and recompress all your pictures so that they are a smaller file, so that your, your, your Word document is not so big. Very useful. I use this all the time. Very useful. I recommend it. Especially if you're having problems emailing. A lot of students I know, you know, they're, oh, i got to email my assignment. but And then even Canvas, right? Some Canvas has a 10 megabyte limit for you. Right? If you're struggling to get the file to go onto Canvas, the easiest way is to recompress the photos in Word. That helps a lot. This one right here resets the picture to back when it was original. Whoosh. Right here, reset. You can undo that and go back to crazy if you want. This one's reset. Then you have some quick styles if you want. You want your picture to have a little bit of flair. Is that a good term to describe it? How about some flair? Look at this one. Flair. 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 Look at that. Flair. Flare. Flare. Look at that one with the little shadow under or a little reflection. That was here. Here's a way that you can, I don't know what this one does. Draws the color of your flare. Draw the color of your flare. Then you can have shadow effects if you want. Boom. Shadow effects. Or how about the 3D rotate? Boom. Look at that one. Really impress your boss if you make a newsletter like this, right? <laughs> so simple. Your boss will give you a raise, maybe. If you don't like them, reset it. Boom, back to normal. Again, this was the reset back to Abby Normal. Abby Normal Brain, what movie was that from? Abby Normal Brain into a six foot or seven foot monster. Which one? Abby Normal Brain into a seven foot monster. What movie? Oh, I said it, Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein, yes. I watched that over the weekend. Then we did position and rap already. Okay, that's enough. You can go home. <laughs>